get the 2023 Clownfish comic books, including Crimson Wren Volume 1 and previously on Clownfish TV. We're offering a limited number of these books. In our second chance offer, go to shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about comic books today. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. Which is where we came from. Which is, yeah, where we came from. But the comic book industry is grappling with low sales. And uh, there are some some bright spots here and there. But, uh, you know, everything that YouTubers have been saying for the last several years uh, turned out to be true that sales are declining. Marvel and DC sales are declining. The shop owners are saying it. Uh, we don't know what the actual numbers are because all this stuff is hidden, of course, of course. But uh, small victory for us. We still publish comic books. Yeah, and this. hey, the book that has been MIA for months that we've been fighting and fighting to get just arrived today and we didn't even know it was coming. <laughs> yeah, it just literally just showed up. There was a truck outside the office honking its horn and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Oh my God, it's our books. It's our books. So yes, Crimson Wren showed up today. Crimson Wren is here. Crimson Wren is here. He is in the building. Yes, a whole big pile of Crimson Wren books. Uh, if you missed out on Crimson Wren, we've got Crimson Wren and previously on Clownfish TV. Uh, these are the two campaigns we ran this year. I shut them down on Indiegogo because we wanted to make sure we could uh, you know, fulfill what we had. But beyond that, there's a little, little issue with Indiegogo. We talked about it. But uh, if you want to pre-order these books, you can go out to shopclownfish.com. Yeah. The previously on Clownfish TV isn't here yet. It's not going to probably get here until September, I'm thinking. Yeah, Sometime yeah. then I'm, at this point. Um, but it's coming. But the Crimson Run is here. So those books will probably start shipping next week it came earlier than we thought so i have i'm still waiting for my packaging stuff to get here yeah. so uh next week probably early in the week i will start i will start sending these out we're still waiting for some prints too i think but the ones yeah, that yeah. you know we can start sending i will start sending them and we'll should be everything should be in by next week yeah we we are not amazon so we will fulfill as as quickly as we can <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a machine man i'm a I, she did I the am shadow binders books and my mom quick, comes yeah. and my mom's a machine too so between the two of us we get it done all right, so this is kind of uh, this is kind of going to segue into this video about comic sales. That uh, I do believe this is the future of comics for most people who want to make a living doing comics, uh, because there's not much of a living to be made for most people working at publishers now, because everything is kind of declining. Right mm -hmm. now, remember how just a year or two ago, it's like everything else. It was like streaming and and everything else. A year or two ago, it's raining money in comics. Yes, comics have never been better. That was the narrative. Yes. And here it turns out that, yeah, comic sales technically were very, very good because people were buying a lot of manga and graphic novels. Mm -hmm, but which not, we pointed out then. Yeah, but they weren't buying floppy books. A lot of people couldn't buy floppy books because a lot of the comic shops were closed. But, you know, I was looking at the headline next to it, and the good news, like, San Diego had a Comic-Con. They actually had a comic convention. And maybe if we get more of that kind of stuff going on, maybe comic sales will go back up. Or maybe there'll be more opportunities for independents to get their books done. I think what happened was, and I, I've heard some other YouTubers talk about this, it, basically the, the shift in focus for the comic book industry hasn't been comic books has been Hollywood. And now that mm -hmm. that's starting to evaporate, you know, those streaming deals aren't going to happen for most people. Movies aren't going to happen for most people, especially now because superhero movies aren't doing that good. Um, I think that people are going to go back to being like, yeah, you know, we have to make comics that are profitable because this is it. Yeah. There is no, there is no next step. It's like either the comic does well and I can make a living publishing comic books or making comic books, you know, and, and forget about the Netflix deal because Good luck with that. It's not that well, ship Well, if you sailed. speak out against the, the strikes, you're never going to get a Netflix deal anyway, but that's another story. That's entirely. another video entirely. We're going to talk about that one too. So this is coming from ICV2, which is a reputable uh, industry publication. Comic sales lag in weak spring. Um, there's not a lot a retailer can do about product that isn't exciting to customers. Said John Robinson of Midwest retail chain Graham Crackers Comics. It's almost like it's logic and, you know... <laughs> it's not like publishers are trying to publish mediocre product. Uh, they don't like, think it's mediocre. The people, the, the people that got the warm seats don't think it's mediocre. The rest of the world does. Okay. Mm, 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 let me finish a sentence and then we can talk about this. Okay, I am sorry. That's okay. They'd like every event to count and grab the public's attention, but it's just not happening. You drove away 
longtime comic book consumers mm -hmm. with mediocre product, mm -hmm. with propaganda. You hired, I'm going to be honest, you hired cheap writers, cheap creators. They came in, they brought their uh, their socialist ideals, I believe, yes. into the industry. And then they wanted to use comic books as a platform because all of these people, or most of these people, they wanted to move on to Netflix. This was just a, a pit stop for them. Comics was just a pit stop to what they thought was going to be a bigger platform. And now they're finding out this is it, man. This is it. The, the, the bus stops here. The train stops here. Do you want to get off at the comic book station or don't you? Yeah, that's it. And a lot of these people choo -choo. are like, choo-choo, <laughs> motherfuckers. Uh, so now people are like, oh, I, I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a lot of people just leave comics because they're like, well, if I can't use comics to move on to something bigger and better because I'm slumming it in comics now, and that's how a lot of these people feel. Yeah. You read I mean, interviews. They'll, they'll tell you that. They'll yeah. tell you that to your face. Like, yeah, I'm just kind of holding out for that Netflix deal my agent's going to get me and yada, 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 yada. And it has worked for some people. But Netflix isn't handing those deals out like they used to. Mm -mm. So you're going to have to learn to love comics. If you don't love comics, get the fuck out of comics. Please. Please. Because some of us love comics. Some of us, some of us have wanted to make comic books since we were little kids and that's literally all we wanted to do. And then when we got to the point where we could do it, the money was fucking gone. By I'm some of saying. us, he does not mean me. He means himself. Yeah, I do. A little salty about that, but we get to make comics. We actually yes, get to make do. our own comics. And I wanted to be an actor and I kind of am. So I'm probably not going to be allowed in the union. You're not going to be allowed. They're never going to let you anywhere near Hollywood. Actually, I think they will. I think everything is changing. I think they will. I think they're going to look for non-union workers now because the union's been a pain in the ass for them. Uh, so here are some other retailers. Th this is so different. This is God. This is so different than what we've heard all these years. The, the retailers were not allowed to say anything. Comics are great, guys. You're just bleeding out money, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Comic shops are closing. That's okay that five actual comic shops closed this guy opened a stall to flea market. That's a new, that's a oh, new yeah, retail they're, they're location. Like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm doing well with my back issues and pop vinyls. That's not the same thing. So Bob Schaefer of Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy in San Antonio, Texas had the same observation. They're trending down because many retailers I've spoken to, including myself, don't really see there's much of a coherent editorial vision with them. You know, it would be interesting to get some of these people, get some of these, these like comic shop owners uh, on when you do a podcast. I would like to. To to like talk about what they're seeing, you know, firsthand, because maybe, you know, maybe we're right. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe they're seeing something completely different. And it'd be interesting to hear from them directly what they're seeing. Yeah. Feet on the ground. What mm -hmm. the hell is going and on? And some of them might be doing well compared to others. And it'd be interesting to see different points of view. That's the thing, because I think that in certain parts of the country, Certain types of titles sell better. And I've joked, I've joked before about how the comic book industry, because there are a lot of freelancers uh, that work in the Portland area. And I joke about how they're basically creating comics uh, for Portland. But there is some truth to that because in Portland, those comics are probably selling very well. Mm -hmm. You know, the activist comics are probably selling very well and their friends are buying them and everybody's, you know, whatever. And this happened in New York too, where you had kind of like the Brooklyn uh, graphic novel scene, which I think uh, Raina Telgemeier was part of. And all those people in New York for a while, they were all, you know, doing the graphic novels and doing the web comics and all that stuff. And so you get very um, distorted view of where the industry actually is or what's actually popular. Because if you're part of that scene, you don't really see outside of it. <laughs> it's kind of like the electoral college. Kind of like the electoral. Yeah, no, it's exactly that. It is the New York Times bestseller list. Same thing. It's the, the, the electoral college because they only take numbers or samplings of numbers from certain shops that are vetted, right? So basically all these, these bookstores or whatever uh, in the country that have been vetted, they're the ones determining what is a bestseller and what's actually selling. Meanwhile, you can smoke them on Amazon. You can have a Kindle book that completely destroys them. Nobody's going to talk about it. No. Because you didn't go through the proper not unless, channels. But not unless you, you find a way to get them to talk about you. That's all our story. That, anyway. And it's usually negatively. Okay, here's here's San Francisco retailer Jeff. Brian Hibbs of Comics Experience. That was uh, uh, Gary from Nerd Roddick's old shop. So this guy uh, chronicles uh, graphic novel sales, book sales. He's been doing that for Comics Beat for a while. Mm -hmm. Some people love him. Some people hate him. A lot of people oh, don't like Oh, he does like Comics him. Beat? 
Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, this is what I say. He said, it's across the board that periodicals are having a lot of trouble. He was a guy, he actually flipped out, I guess, image now that they're going through another distributor. He said it's going to kill his business because he's, he's like, it was so much easier just to order from Diamond. Yeah. But I'm also like, not going into details, but we may or may not have a retail location uh, of a different variety ourselves. And we may or may not be forced to order from multiple sources because that's usually how retailers work. Yes. Uh, comic book retailers, for some reason, just got used to just basically becoming, I think, a franchise of Diamond. Like, well, that's, just, why, that's why, you know, it's, it's kind of good to have variety because everybody had the same stuff. Yes. Everybody had the same stuff. You go to any comic shop and for the most part, unless they were buying directly from, you know, different sources or they were getting, you know, pre-owned stuff, whatever. It was all the same shit. It all came out mm -hmm. the same day. Anyway. Uh, by and large, it's because the publishers have not been doing the thing they need to do, which is trying to increase their market to get new customers in. No, they they actually tried very hard to get new customers in, but at the expense of pushing the old customers out. You can have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You can you can make your legacy fans happy by not fucking with characters and properties that work. The X Men should be selling two hundred thousand copies every freaking month. You know, like, and there should be no question. The X-Men should be selling very, very well. But they've, they've messed with these properties to the point where they're unrecognizable. Then as you're doing that, you you create some other titles, create some brand new characters, new concepts to try to get a new audience in as well. What they've been doing is it's been a zero-sum game. It's either or. Either we make the old men happy or we push the stinky old men out. But the stinky old men had their stinky old money. Well, they, yeah, you need you, you find a new audience, you just have to try, but they don't allow it. No. Uh, they're trying to maximize the amount of money that they're getting from the people who are already buying comics, which worked for a little while, then it stopped working. Because people can smell sincerity. Bullshit. Nah. If, you're, if you can't smell the sincerity, blame the publishers. Because, you know, they're, oh, we're, cause they're just busy chasing the stinky people who bought them before. Yeah, because they know those people are, gonna buy, are going to spend money. However, that's not true. Because we, as we've seen, they have gone out of their way to chase those people off. Because they were the wrong kinds of people. Because we need this kind of audience or that kind of audience. And when that didn't stick, now they're trying to damage control to get people back. So that whole, I would argue that whole statement is kind of false but anyway wait what oh my god i can't i can't believe he's saying this okay sit down for this one okay sit down hibbs noted that the level of talent working on comics had declined no I, shit i thought comics have never been be been better and we've got this golden age of comics and all these people are, are geniuses on par with alan moore uh which was affecting the content pipeline in this particular moment the major issue I see is people doing things outside of the market. Yeah, because they don't. You, you're you're trying to keep them out. So they're like, yes. fuck you. you. It's all because it's all because they necessarily wanted to go outside the market, but you didn't give them a choice. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. By that I mean doing Kickstarters, not Indiegogo. That's where Comic Skate goes. Selling their books on whatnot, Substack. They took a lot of the marketplace when the top ten, top twenty, or top fifty creators all went off to work in a different market for a year or two. A lot of these people aren't working for Marvel or DC or Image to get the material out there. Why the fuck would they? Yeah. For a number of reasons. Um, well, what, most of them would be people that you would they would have gotten fired because they would have been labeled the wrong kind of person for their gender or color or you know everything that they complain about doing to other people they would have done to them and, and that would have been bad. So there are former A list comics creators that have low key been blackballed, blacklisted from the industry, like Chuck Dixon, guys who worked in the industry for years who were well respected creators, and uh, they've been forced to kind of work outside the system. Now. He goes on, if you don't have big name people doing big name material at the big name companies, then where's the excitement in the market? Because you guys pushed out the big name people who are doing big name titles. Unless they agreed to your manifesto. Wasn't there a thing they were trying to get people to sign? At one point, they were, you didn't, you know, you weren't one of us and they kicked you out. And they were Oh, yeah, you had to sign the manifest. Yeah, like, yes. don't rape people. You shouldn't have to sign a contract or publicly declare that you're not going to rape people. Yeah, meanwhile, there were people that got <laughs> in that I know for a fact that were like, you, you know, shoving their tatas and, and editors' faces trying to get them, you know, intercepting their drinks and then, and then leaning over to hand it to them to make, to make pretty to get themselves a, a deal and, and bragged about it at an event we were at in one of the panels. Uh, Robinson of Graham Crackers, Ruth, the weaker talent, they're admitting it. They're admitting everything that YouTubers have been saying. But it's okay now because the YouTubers all said it and took all the shit and now it's acceptable for them to say it. Yeah. And they saw that YouTubers took all the money. And then they'll be like, oh That's, my God, we invented know. it guys. Uh, lots of C list creators put on major titles or events. The people working on X-Men now, 
never in a million years would have gotten to touch the X-Men 20, 30 years ago. Oh, I know. And I mean, there's and no way in hell. The quality is just nowhere near what it was. They wouldn't have even gotten a, a, a backup story in an annual on an X-Men title. X-Men and Spider-Man were like the top, top, top books. Batman, the top, top, top book. Top, top talent. And they were the top talent. Biggest page rates because those books were consistently good sellers. And they couldn't afford, the companies could not afford to fuck up the X-Men or fuck up Spider-Man or Batman. Now they're just like, yeah, whatever. You want to turn uh, Tim Drake Robin into this, uh, you know, bisexual twink? That's fine. Have you seen some of the That's art? fine. Like when, when Captain Marvel looked like, you know, Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. And then we have, you know, the She-Hulk. And then the Wonder Woman. And they look like, they look like terrible. They look like Never indie comics. have flown you no. know, I'm not saying there's not an audience for that style. I'm sure there are. And if they're doing yeah, things in their yeah. own style, I'm, I'm sure it works. But people are expecting a certain quality from comic books that have been a certain quality for decades. That That is that is the problem. Like, even when you look at, like, I am not Starfire and you look at. Oh, my God. That one. Uh, and you and you look, and you look at uh, you look at the Tim Drake Robin miniseries like I. Those artists have a place. They they usually belong in the independence to create their own stuff. They do not belong in my opinion, on uh, mainstream superhero comics, unless they can totally draw in a style. Some people draw different styles. They can if they can draw in a style that is worthy of being there. Then yes, because some people do. They they draw in different different ways depending on what the project is. Yeah, and then you've got some people that are more cartoony or have their own flair. But usually, in a case like that, like you would have a Scotty Young or a Sam Keith or you know back in the day, and they would be given like mini series that were kind of self contained, or they'd be given backup stories, or they do a, a special or something like that. You didn't put. Sam Keith on, uh, on X-Men, you know, as much as I love Sam Keith, because it's not a good fit for the title and the expectations of the title, you know, as a very mainstream, like this is kind of what it is. Uh, meanwhile, you've got guys that worked on Batman during, uh, it's, it's prime doing their own stuff like Chuck Dixon, because he's not allowed to work at DC or Marvel now. And he was, he was selling, he was selling comics out the freaking Wahoo back in the nineties, but you won't put those guys on these books. No, because they're the wrong kind of person. So this is what this is this kind of goes along with what we saw, I think, at San Diego this year, where they were allowing YouTubers to come to San Diego and sell their shit with minimal issue because the retailers are even like, Yeah, all the talent's going to independence. It's all going to crowd. Yeah, a lot of talent that would have brought people were, are those people. You drove them out. Right. You chased them out. I mean, Mark Wade. Mark Wade is to blame for most of this. It was mm -hmm. Mark Wade deciding that he was going to police the comic he book industry. He was the czar of the industry. He was the czar because he's in charge of the retailer uh, organization or whatever because he has shops too, right? Because he has to control that too. And he decided that uh, Zach from YouTube wasn't worth being in the comic book industry. And he threatened threatened other retailers. Uh, he threatened Dan Arctic Press. And he kept Zach's books out of the shops, but Zach's books consistently do hundreds of thousands of dollars in crowdfunding. That is hundreds of thousands of potential dollars that went through retailers' fingers because Mark Wade decided he was going to police who got to be in the comic book industry. And this is what allegedly. you got left. Put allegedly. Allegedly in there. We all know. Allegedly. He fucking did it. And that's what got us into well, this shit, got, too. Yeah, a lot of people got upset because they're like, wait, 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 He has what? no right to do that. <laughs> he had no right to do that. And now... Because of that, the people who are truly talented saw that. So this is all Mark. Way I mean, I, I you can. I don't think it's all him, but yes. I think he was a huge catalyst for this. I think he, yeah. I Mark think, well, Wade. And his groups, like the, the, the secret groups and things, yes. I think, and not just necessarily the one he was in, but like the Whisper Networks, I think they had a lot to do with it too because they were trying to take power, trying to put their friends in, and they succeeded. And what happened was they succeeded and the books went down the shithole. Yeah. You do not have to agree with all of the takes that YouTubers have on Marvel and DC Comics. I think sometimes some of the stuff is really nitpicky shit, right? That being said, you cannot deny that there are problems with the Western comic book industry and that those co those problems have uh, escalated because of all the political bullshit that's been going on. And a lot of the people who are truly talented uh, and, and saw the, the business model being proven decided to just go do their own shit. They didn't go to Marvel or DC. They're like, Marvel and DC's fine. You guys can have it. You guys want it. You want to hire these people to, to work on top shelf talent? Go ahead and hire them and you get what you fucking pay for. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened. Th this, this all could have been avoided. So there you are, but that's okay. Go buy Crimson Rent.
<laughs> we're very proud of this book. Uh, go buy Crimson Wren. There's going to be a lot more Clownfish uh, Studios comics. Uh, check it out, shopclownfish.com. We're going to publish our own stuff. We'll figure out a way to get, we, we're going to get some retailers, some copies. We, we have a, we had tiers that we're going to, but we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. If you guys own a comic shop, you want to carry our books, reach out. We'll figure something out. We'll figure yep. something out, right? Yep. All right. So uh, we're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.